And in just a few moments, you'll be able to go to the website, lauraingram.com, and start bidding for the Wounded Warrior Project in the Fisher House on Sarah Palin's red jacket that she wears on the cover of her best-selling book. Now, Going Rogue has sold over a million copies, people lining up, 2,000 people in the ice storm in Northern Virginia when she was signing in Northern Virginia recently. Other stories repeated like that across the United States. And the numbers for Sarah Palin versus Barack Obama, fascinating. Of course, it's all because Sarah Palin doesn't have to deal with the tough issues of the day. Say the elites on television, like Tina, Tina Brown was on MSNBC saying, well, this is all because Barack Obama's actually, co- he's actually tackling the important issues, and she's just going around promoting this book that she, you know, she, she supposedly wrote. I'm just trying to dismiss it, and of course, it drives them insane. Because they don't understand why people are rallying uh, to, to, to her cause and her ideas and what she stands for and represents. And I'm telling you, it's partly because of, of her generous spirit. And when I asked her on the spot during our last interview with her, when I asked her if she would do this for the troops, for the Wounded Warrior and the, and the Fisher Project, Fisher House, on the spot, Governor Palin said yes. The auction begins now. Governor Palin, without further ado, how you doing on the book trail? Hey, we're having a blast. We're in Idaho this morning, and um, it's just been absolutely amazing and astounding and, and really confirming that the, the American people are uh, getting pretty sick and tired of what's going on in D.C., and they're showing up on this book tour to let me know what they think. So, uh, Governor Palin, the auction has officially kicked off on the LauraIngram.com website. Uh, you, without a hesitation, uh, gave us your coat that has become kind of an iconic symbol, that red coat that you wore on the cover of your book. And uh, we're already getting bids that are coming in on the website. And uh, I just want to tell you personally, uh, I appreciate it so much that you, uh, you just you say, of course, what can we do? What can we do together? I love that spirit. Well, that, that's great, and um, no, it's such a privilege to get to do this with you, Laura, and I know that your heart is there with the troops also, and um, I had a great visit at Walter Reed on Sunday with some of our recovering troops, and, you know, meeting with these guys and these gals, it, it absolutely changes your life. It, it shows you the level of sacrifice and commitment to something greater than self that these troops put forth for our safety, our security, and it's whatever I can do, and I know that you feel the same way. Uh, absolutely. And in that same vein, Governor Palin, uh, next Tuesday, and I know your staff has already uh, heard about it, next Tuesday, uh, uh, grassroots organizations across the country are putting together a rally uh, against this so-called reform that's going to bankrupt America and diminish our choices. The Code Red Rally, they're calling it. And guess what? People are going to be wearing red jackets. And, you know, you wore red on the cover of your book, but it's an emergency. I mean, it's the red for the emergency, and it's all happening at 1.30 on Tuesday, December 15th. So I think that's going to be another show of power. That's, that is another show of power. It's um, that, that voice that I think a lot of Americans had thought for a while was not being heard. They're going to rise up, and Washington, D.C. has to hear from us at this point, and uh, I think that's going to be a, a, great, a great illustration of um, what it is that we have to say. Everybody wearing red. I love it. And, Governor Palin, how's your son doing? Because he's still deployed, right, in Iraq? They returned. Um, he is safe and sound on his base up at Fort Wainwright. And, of course, the guys will see where they're headed next, perhaps Afghanistan. He's doing great. He, along with the, you know, tens of thousands of other young Americans who are willing to put their life on the line for us, I'm very proud of him, proud of every one of these young men and women who are doing this for us. And, to Governor Palin, I'm sure you've heard the uh, breathless uh, commentary on cable news about your op-ed that you wrote in the Washington Post, your op-ed about Copenhagen and the fact that President Obama should have boycotted the event because not only of climate gate, but uh, all the questions that remain on this uh, this whole charge to reduce carbon emissions and thus reduce our our uh, standard of living in the United States. Are you surprised by the reaction? I uh, shouldn't be surprised by the reaction. I'm surprised, though, that 
Al Gore wants to pretend like there is not a controversy or a scandal involved in this. Uh, it's kind of like denying gravity at this point, is how I put it, that he wants to deny that the uh, American people are up in arms about this climate gate, knowing that there has been some junk science involved in this and some data ignored and, and uh, I think some data made up as uh, some of these emails reveal. As governor of the state of Alaska, I sued the Fed saying, look, we, we want to make sure that decisions uh, in terms of um, who what would be listed on the Endangered Species Act is going to be based on science, not politics. I sued them because they wanted to list the polar bear, though the population of the, the polar bear species has increased, not decreased. They want to list that on the ESA uh, in spite of hard data, hard science that um, would show, uh, I think, uh, very rational thinking people that some of the things that these scientists, these climate change experts, so-called, have been telling the American people isn't always um, factually based. Sued the feds, took massive heat, got clobbered by the environmentalists for that. And um, now, you know, there's a little bit of indication there, not just of my action, but of so many other Americans saying, look, we want these decisions based on science, not on politics. For Al Gore now to deny that the people are up in arms about this, saying that, yeah, this this is scandalous, what has happened there. Um, he is just uh, ignoring not only the voice of the people, but he is ignoring facts, data. It's kind of like ignoring gravity. Yeah, well, he's ha, he's saying, and he, I've, I know you've, you've heard the interview on MSNBC, NBC. He said that the deniers are persisting in an era of unreality. The entire North Polar ice cap is disappearing before our eyes. What do they think is happening? How do you respond? You know, for him to call me or anybody else a denier of some climate change conditions, I'm not denying that. I'm saying, you know, we've had glaciers receding in the only Arctic state, Alaska, um, for many years. It's cyclical, though. This is... Nobody can solely blame man's activities on this, and that's the point. Not denying that the Earth's weather patterns change. But, you know, I'm not going to say that it's because man's um, activities of driving a car or drilling for oil has caused these conditions to change. This has been going on for eons, and I think that this is a money-making deal for Al Gore and some of his environmentalist friends. I, I think it's atrocious that they want to deceive the public into seeing that believing that this is only because of man's activities when um, I think a lot of these emails prove that there isn't that consensus even in the climate change expert community. Would you uh, agree to a debate with Al Gore on this issue? Oh, my goodness. You know, it, it depends on what the venue would be, what the forum, because, Laura, as you know, um, if it would be some kind of conventional, traditional debate uh, with his friends setting it up or, or being mm -hmm. the commentators, and I'll get clobbered because, you know, they don't want to listen to the facts. They don't want to listen to um, some reasonable voices in this. And that was proven with the publication of this op-ed where they kind of got all wee-weed up about it and <laughs> wanted to call me and others deniers of changing uh, weather, weather patterns and, and climate conditions, trying to... Um, you know, make the issue into, issue into something that it is not. Well, what if it's an Oxford-style proper debate format? I mean, he's going to chicken out. I mean, if you challenge him to a debate, do you actually think he would accept it? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Oh, he wouldn't want to uh, lower himself, I think, to, uh, you know, my level to debate little old Sarah Palin from Wasilla. <laughs> oh, well, I, uh, I was, I'm telling you. Talk about raising money for charity. By the way, your jacket is now up to what, Tom? 6000 plus? Yes. And it just started like three minutes ago, Governor Palin. So we are ex extremely excited that uh, we are able to raise this money, especially at this time of year where so many military families are truly struggling. And I know you, you've been to Walter Reed just recently, and it's so heartwarming uh, to see the sacrifice of these family members and, of course, the servicemen and women uh, themselves. And, and we're just thrilled and delighted that you came on uh, with us. And thank you for what you're doing out there. And the thing I like about you, Governor Palin, is that you're not afraid, okay? You're not afraid. You have guts. And as one of our emailers just said on our website, Sarah Palin has more blanks than uh, half of the men on Capitol Hill. So, so that's uh, you've got a lot of supporters out there.
Hey, I appreciate that. But, Laura, like you, you know, I feel like I've got nothing to lose. I'm going to get out there and call it like I see it, and um, I'll hold people accountable. And uh, the message that we have, it, it's strong, it's powerful, it's truth, where we want to see our country go, and that is on the right path economically and militarily. Um, I'm going to keep speaking up, and I know that you are, too, and that's why we appreciate you. Governor Palin on the Laura Ingram Show. Thank you so much. The auction continues. Kim Commando.